Today I'm getting started with the Three Rivers Homestead <laughs> Pantry Challenge. I thought I'd bring you along while I make dinner tonight and kind of tell you my plans for this challenge. I'm gonna start with some frozen turkey broth and get this boiling before I start chopping up carrots. So Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead tells everyone to basically make up their own set of rules for doing this challenge. So I wanted to start by telling you my do's. Basically my plan is to work on eating up a lot of the food that we produced on our homestead this last year. So in terms of produce, we have quite a few butternut squash and then we have some sweet potatoes left over. I've used quite a few of the sweet potatoes already, but we still have quite a few left. In a recent video, I showed how we just harvested a bunch of carrots as well. So I have a half a crate of carrots in the garage right now. So those are the main storage crops that we yeah. grew this year on our homestead. And we have a handful of onions, but they're just tiny. Um, next year, I hope to get a better crop of storage onions. Some other produce that we grew on our farm last year was corn. We have quite a bit of corn that is in the freezers actually. And then besides that, I have a lot of peaches that I sliced and froze in the freezer. So also in our freezer, we have six turkeys that we raised on our homestead this year. And we have a quarter cow that we bought from someone at church. I also have some canned peaches and pickles and green beans and different salsas and some jams and jellies and syrups. The chickens are really slow on their laying right now in the winter, so we don't have a lot of eggs coming in, but we do have a lot of milk coming in. So one of my goals is to utilize the milk really well. My plan for this winter would be to have, to roast one or two turkeys each month. And usually we'll eat meat off a turkey and then we will, and then we will pull extra meat off to make a couple other meals and then we'll boil the bones to make a lot of broth. So we really love how one turkey can provide a whole lot of meals for the family. So those are all the expectations that I've set for myself on this challenge. In terms of the don'ts, I don't have a lot of rules for myself there. For me, Providing food for myself at home has always been about living an abundant life and living a better life than I could if, um, if I wasn't growing and providing some of my own food. My goal is to use up these things that we have grown and provided for ourselves and to do that in a good way and a way that is, is pleasing and enjoyable for the whole family. If I have to run to town to grab something to go with a recipe that is 95% homegrown produce, then that's totally acceptable to me. So hang around and I'm gonna show you quite a few things that we make this week. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, desserts, using all of this delicious homegrown food. One thing I've been wanting to make since we pulled up all of our carrots was, uh, was carrot soup. I'll put a link down to the recipe below, but basically it's just a bunch of carrots boiled in broth with some cream added at the end. The other thing I made this night was some sourdough bread but since my starter's been asleep for a while, I went ahead and added extra yeast. Then I wanted to make something for dessert, and so I tried this butterscotch pudding by Pioneer Woman, but frankly, it was a little disappointing. It was too sweet for us, so I'll need to find a different recipe. Tonight for dinner, I'm making sweet potato and black bean chili, and I'm going to use a couple of these tiny onions that grew in our garden this year. I keep not wanting to use those because it's going to take a lot of effort to get the papers off, but I'm going to use those tonight and then use a couple of sweet potatoes from our garden and then some frozen diced tomatoes from our garden this summer and some frozen chicken or turkey stock. I'm not sure which one it is. I should mark it better apparently. And it also uses uh, black beans and chipotle peppers. I forgot to mention we have a lot of garlic from our garden to use up as well and this recipe called for some of that. And then I have an extra loaf of sourdough left over from the batch I made last night.
while that was simmering on the stove, I actually made a batch of homemade butter. I already mentioned that Jeremy makes breakfast for us. Uh, you know, know your strengths. That's what I say. So getting up early in the morning is not actually a strength of mine. Jeremy takes good care of us. And this day he made homemade breakfast cookie bars. Tonight for dinner, I'm going to make stuffed shells, butternut stuffed shells, um, to use up one of the butternuts. I, uh, I thought I had another one. I found one more. So I have five of these good sized butternut from our garden this year that we haven't eaten yet. So we're going to use one of those tonight. And I have some kale that is not from our garden. Our garden kale is pretty frozen down at the moment, but I was able to find a teeny tiny sprig of sage from our garden to use. We bought homegrown butter. I'm going to make lemon cheese. That's a, it's a really good cheese. It's super easy to make. And I'll be using that in place of ricotta in this recipe. And I don't think I have time to do mozzarella tonight. I have a little chunk of mozzarella left from this uh, store-bought mozzarella. So I'll be using that instead. And then I just have some jumbo shells. Kids really like my kids really like these jumbo shells. They're just kind of fun. I remember eating these as a kid and they're just, they just kind of seem a little extra fun. So there's quite a few moving parts in this dinner tonight. Something that really makes this really flavorful is this browned butter. You melt the butter and cook it till it browns just a little bit with the sage leaves in it and then it just puts so much flavor through the whole thing. When I was cooking the butternut squash in the oven, I threw in a sweet potato so that I could make these sweet potato pancakes. When I'm making pancakes, I make sure and put the, pan the cast iron on the stove before I start mixing up the batter to give the cast iron time to heat up properly. We finally bit the bullet and bought a second cast iron skillet. It's just really a necessity for meals like this, especially because I end up using one of them to cook the breakfast sausage in. We got this pork from one of Jeremy's co-workers. They were getting ready to process pigs this fall and still had ground pork left over from the, from the last year. We ate it with some fresh grapefruit as well. Tonight I decided to make a family favorite creamy broccoli cheddar soup. I had some frozen broccoli that I used along with our little onions and the last bit of cheddar cheese from the fridge and some milk from our cow. I actually could kick myself because I was in a hurry tonight, but normally when I make this, I actually like to grate up carrot because I feel like it gives that visual idea of the cheddar cheese, but really it's adding even more nutrition to the soup but I was in such a hurry tonight that I just forgot to do that. We served this with some homemade venison sausage that our neighbor gave us. Jeremy used some more of that sausage to make a breakfast frittata with kale and sausage and potatoes. We've been doing a lot of baking this week, so I needed to refill my flour jar from the big bucket. And the baby wanted to get in on the action and helped me with that refilling and so then we needed a good sweeping up afterwards. All right, it's Friday night. We're having pizza tonight. So I'm gonna make some pizza dough and then I'm going to 
Use some milk to make some 30 minute mozzarella. This is my fourth batch of mozzarella and my first one was my least successful and this one turned out really nice. Pizza on Fridays kind of became a tradition for our family starting around the beginning of the COVID lockdowns. We've done a lot of fancy pizzas over the years and little individual pizzas on the, on the pizza stone, but I've lately started making these grandma pies or sheet pan pizzas and they're just a really quick and easy way to, to really make enough food for the whole family. We ran another batch of butter while we were waiting for the pizzas to cook. We were kind of low on toppings tonight, but the pizzas turned out really good and everyone liked them. For breakfast, Jeremy used some of the leftover black bean and sweet potato chili and actually mixed it up with eggs and cooked that to make breakfast burritos. Since we can't garden outside right now, we bought this mushroom growing kit. Come back next time and find out what we do with these mushrooms that are pinning and about to pop out.